No, actually, the dumbest thing that you can do to your body is staple your nutsack to the floor. Hey friends, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer, and you know I'm all about being prepared. And here are a few tips to ensure that you are always ready. I've broken one of my own rules. I've let my tank in my truck, my fuel tank, get down to a quarter of a tank, or actually below it. Quarter tank is empty. If you wanna be prepared for those fuel shortages that may come, that almost certainly will come again, you need to make sure that you have your tank filled up as much as possible um, with fuel. Um, so if it gets near that quarter tank, just pretend that quarter tank is empty and you'll never be without. On a quarter tank, most cars, let's say I've got a 16 gallon tank, I could go probably, what would be the math on that in my truck? I could go easily 100 miles probably in my truck on a quarter of a tank. So that's a pretty significant distance and probably get me out of a jam out of most congested areas, unless it's gridlocked or something like that, but that's a whole nother situation. So quarter tank, empty. If you should hear that bump in the night, you want to be prepared, you want to be ready. So I recommend keeping a hammer with some spare nails next to the bedside. Now I understand if you have children, um, you might have to take some extra precautions, but that's on you, that's not on me. You do what you do in your household and what you think is appropriate. Um, but I'll keep a hammer with a uh, mounted light, very bright one, on my hammer just in case because you can't hit what you can't see and it's really difficult to drive nails in the dark. Another good tip is to keep your pants loaded. I don't wear, I mean, I wear the same pants multiple days in a row, which I, I'm sure a lot of you guys do out there as well. Um, keep your pants loaded. Don't empty out your pockets. Keep everything in the pockets in this normal everyday carry place. And if you want to see what my everyday carry is, you can look at that video. I've done that before. It hasn't changed too much other than adding this wazoo belt. So in my pants, I've got ways to start fire. I've got multi-tools. I've got um, all of the things that I keep in my wazoo belt, such as, you know, even a signaling mirror, all kinds of different stuff in here. But these things are ready to go. So if there was that bump in the night, all I really got to do is hop out of bed, throw my pants quickly on. Might even be a good idea to have some um, uh, slip-on quick kind of put on shoes that you don't don't require socks and stuff like that ready to go um, and then I'm dressed and ready for action whatever that might entail these true spec pants even fit good over my camping jammies see it says it right on there happy camper <laughs> uh, when it comes to kids and and hammers the most important thing I think in my opinion take it for what it is is that you educate your children on the safe use of them. Make it so it's not, so it's an ordinary thing. It's not a, um, it's not an oddity. It's not some novelty. It's not something really cool that they think that they need to play with or, or something that's normally off, uh, you know, uh, off uh, limits, but except when mom and dad is around now, I can, I can do what I want. Get rid of all that stuff. Um, l let them safely under safe conditions and under, um, parental control, let them hold the hammers, let them shoot them, you know, something that they can handle, obviously. So they're more familiar with it. They understand the basic safety rules. Um, and then you shouldn't have any problems. Um, but they also make um, bedside safes with quick fingerprint uh, readers on that pop right open really, really fast. Uh, that will only open to uh, its owner. And I think those are really cool and something worth investing in or at least looking at. But, um, but again, when it comes to kids and hammers, you do you, you do your research, you do what you feel is right and what you think um, is best for your family. Another really great handy thing that I've taken to doing, not all the time, but if I'm at home and I'm working on things and I need my hands free for most stuff, I've taken to carrying a neck knife like this. This is just a simple, um, inexpensive Mora Eldris. I, I really like this knife. A lot of people don't like it because of the really, really short blade, but it does 95, maybe even more percent of the jobs that are required. Um, and if I keep it in this, I, I made this sheath. This is a custom sheath. There's nothing really wrong with the one that it comes with. It just doesn't have as good of a retention as this one. 
snaps into place. It locks in there and it does not come out without a good yank. So I'm not gonna drop it, not gonna lose it, not gonna be an issue. Um, a lot of people frown upon neck knives. They're thinking, oh, you're gonna you know, hang yourself in the woods on a branch or something because they've apparently known of so many people that that has happened to. The other option is to do, you know, the pocket clip kind of knife, right? Something that's right there, kind of exposed just a little bit and you can easily access it and get to it. But I've lost several knives and I've lost a couple of multi-tools like that with a pocket clip. So I just don't, I don't trust it at all. Um, my multi-tool I keep in my pocket, but it's way down in there. So, I, and I've never lost it because of that. Um, so if I want something easy access, you know, ready to go at a moment's notice, if I need it, need it quick. If I'm holding something, got to get it secure. I just need to make a small cut on it or something like that. This is about as easy as it gets. I had a funny comment one time. I, I, I've reserved it until now. I was going to respond to it, but I just didn't. I normally don't respond to the, the negative comments or people that are, are just kind of trolling. I just don't, I just ignore it. Um, but the comment was, um, a neck knife is the dumbest thing you can do to your body. You know, that was his response to my neck knife that I was wearing in the video. Um, and I really wanted to respond with no. Actually, the dumbest thing that you can do to your body is staple your nutsack to the floor. But I held off until now, so <laughs> there's that. So here's another good application for a small neck knife like this. Doesn't have to be this knife, obviously, it could be any knife, but in a neck knife configuration, you can hang it from your rear view mirror and it's always just right there, at easy access. Um, I do this a lot for my wife. My In my wife's car, she's always got a knife hanging from that rear view mirror. She carries a pistol a lot of the time, um, but she doesn't always carry it on her person. Actually, I'm trying to break her of that, but she rarely carries it on her person. It's usually in her purse, which, I know you don't you, I get it I know you don't have to explain it to me um, but having that neck knife right there for easy access all she has to do to get that thing is that and she can go to poking if she should need to for whatever reason that may be and then she just you know got a knife for general utility purposes as well This is a three quarter pound jump rope from Mute Sports. Fantastic piece of training equipment. Exhausting, just for a few seconds of jumping rope. But in all seriousness, being physically fit is probably, well, it's not easy. If this video is, I don't know what I'm gonna title this video yet, but it might be easy, simple ways to be prepared, me be more prepared, but it may not be easy, but it is something that is fairly simple doesn't require a lot of expertise in anything, doesn't really require an investment in anything, no money required. Just get out and start moving your body through space and you will be dramatically fitter than if you're just that couch potato right now. I mean, don't give me the excuse that you can't, don't have time, you can't fit it in. Uh, nobody's more busy than me. I've got just as busy a life as you do. Um, got kids, got wife, got jobs, multiple jobs. Uh, making videos, editing videos. I stay really, really busy, but I still fit it in because it's a priority of mine. Um, and if you're not physically fit, uh, if you can't, you know, here, well, here's a baseline. I'm going to make one up for you. If you can't run a mile without stopping or walking, um, you're not fit enough. If you can't do a pull-up, you're not fit enough. And I apologize if that comes off a little bit harsh or abrasive um, to some of you out there, but it's just the truth. And honestly, the only reason I say anything about that is because I, I really, really, really just want the best for everybody that's watching this. I think of us as a community, everybody that's watching, and I want the best for you. Um, and if you're not physically fit, you are so lacking. Um, and it's gonna be a really, really hard go if your life depends on you being able to move your body through space, getting from point A to point B in a hurry um, may not be possible for you if you've been sitting on the couch for the past 20 years uh, doing nothing. So get up, start being active, take 15 minutes a day and um, get something done. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment. Tell us uh, some other quick tips, some quick things that we can do to be more prepared. There's so many out there, I know. 
Um, so many things out there that I'm not aware of, so please share. And hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you next time.